buckle up, concrete fans. This is it. We're going to finally work the tarantula curve mixture design example problem. Yeah, we're going to use a spreadsheet. We're going to go through all the steps, every single detail. It is going to be glorious. I hope you're ready. Here's the example problem. We're going to design a concrete floor slab that must be pumped for interior exposure. That means it doesn't have durability issues. It's inside of a building. Its design strength is 4,500 PSI. That's all it's given. Now, there's a couple of things we need to know. We know that we're going to use a 20% Class C fly ash. You say, well, why would you do that? Well, it's good to see different types of concrete mixtures being used. And in a lot of places, fly ash is very, very prevalently used. So you should know how to design with it and see how it's working. But another big one is because of money. Okay? Fly ash isn't always cheaper, but historically it's been cheaper than Portland cement. And in many cases, it's still quite a bit cheaper than Portland cement. So to save money. So since there's interior exposure, there's no direct durability requirements. And based on the three-point curve, we're going to use a water cement ratio of 0.45. I'm not going to show the details. We talked about three-point curves in previous um, videos. Here are all the different materials and their specific gravities. We're using cement, fly ash, water, coarse aggregate, intermediate aggregate, fine aggregate. The aggregate is clean. That's good. It's cubical in shape. That's good. And the sand is a natural source. Also good. Now here are the gradations given over here. These are all the percent retained gradations. And we're going to use those in a spreadsheet coming up. We're going to use this chart to help us decide how much binder content to use. Now, we said this was gonna be pumped concrete. So because of that, we'd expect about a six inch slump or 564 pounds of total binder content. All right, we got our binder content, 564 pounds. We're gonna be using 20% fly ash. That means 80% of the binder is gonna be cement. That's 400 and, uh, 51 pounds and 20% of it is going to be fly ash. That's 113 pounds. Now our water content is just total binder multiplied by 0.45, our water cement ratio to get 254 pounds. And we're going to be using 2% volume of air. Why is that? Because it's not air and trained. It's not external concrete. Okay. And we're just assuming that's the something called entrapped air. We'll talk more about that coming up. That's just the air it's inside the concrete just from mixing, okay? About 2%. Now, how about the aggregate? Now, I talked about this, you know, you know, in the past. I'm going to assume numbers similar to this, but we're going to iterate in the actual spreadsheet. The remainder of the page gives detailed lists of what I'm going to do. I'm not going to show, over, show you this or go over this. I'm going to do it you're going to see it in the spreadsheet. And then you can always refer back to this sheet if you want to, if you want to kind of get some insights of what's going on. This is the Tarantula Curve Excel document. This is going to help you design the concrete mixture. Let's go through each one of the tabs. The first tab is the Mixture Design tab. It's got all the different materials. It's got the weights. It has the specific gravities. And from that information, it will calculate the volumes for you. It'll calculate the total weight, the idealized uh, density. Gives you some paste properties like water cement ratio, SEM, per, SEM amount, total binder content, sack content, paste content percentages of each one of the aggregates you're using. And here's the tarantula curve. This is the curve that we, we've been talking about for the last um, few videos. You can see how we actually developed it. And we could also see why it's important and helpful. 
And this is the curve, and these are the checks. These checks are really important as well. There's a coarse sand check and a fine sand check. One of these applies to slip form paving, and one of them applies to pumping. Okay? On this other tab, this is the sieve analysis for the actual design. So the percent passing is what the spreadsheet uses to determine what the gradation is. It's going to calculate a percent retained, and this is for information only. There are some helpful charts down here, though, plots. This is a typical percent passing plot, and this is a typical percent retain chart. This percent retain chart is going to be really helpful. I'll explain it more in just a second. Now, there are some times, though, that you're not given aggregates in a percent passing. Let's say this, this helps you actually, if you're given um, a percent retained, this will actually help you calculate a percent passing. So you can copy it and put it in the previous worksheet. We're going to do that on this problem. Now, on this problem, I've already typed in all of these percent retained numbers. These numbers match the ones inside the problem. This is the first step we're going to do to actually solve this. From this percent retained, the spreadsheet is calculated a percent passing. We're going to copy this. We're going to highlight this whole thing. Highlight, highlight, highlight. We're going to copy it. We're going to come over to the Civ analysis, to this input box. And we're going to do a special paste. I just hit Alt E S for a paste special. And I'm going to paste the values, not the equation, just the values. And it should change things here. And that ultimately is going to change things here. And this should match what was given to you in the problem. I typed it in before we started on the previous worksheet and I pasted it. I pasted the percent passing because this is the input for the design. This is what the actual spreadsheet uses. And so that you can see what the percent passing looks like on the left. And I don't really, this is somewhat helpful, but for me, this plot on the right is much more helpful. And what I'm looking for is where are their overlaps and where are the peaks at? Because what we're going to do is choose different percentage of each one of these different aggregates to build my tarantula curve. And I want to know if I have overlap, for example, because that might be a reason why I might be out and not be able to help myself, not be able to fix it. Let's go to the, the main mixture design sheet. Now, this looks totally crazy because the numbers are all wrong. So let's put the right numbers in. For aggregate number one, we assumed 1450. Okay. For number two, we assumed 350. For number three, there's nothing. For the fine aggregate, we assume 1,200. For the cement content, 451. For the fly ash, 113. For the water content, 254. And we come over here to the air content, and we assume 2%. Now we need to fill out our specific gravities. Specific gravity of coarse aggregate was 2.65. The other one was also 2.65. This one's not needed. Fine aggregate was 2.60. Fly ash is right, 2.5. And that specific gravity assumed for cement. That specific gravity for water 
And now we have our first guess into the spreadsheet. But there's two major problems. First major problem is that we can see here, we're not to 27 cubic feet. We're under yielding. We have another problem as well. We're out of the tarantula curve right over here. Okay. And I remember from the previous plot that this is mainly caused by my course number one. But let's see here. Let's look at our fine. It's pretty low. It's nowhere near the actual boundary. And if I check these down here, my fine aggregates, my coarse sand is 26.5, which is greater than 20. I'm doing great. I don't need to change my coarse sand at all. It's awesome. And my fine sand is around 29%, and it's between 25 and 40. Okay, so I've got plenty of room to go. So this means when I adjust up to 27 cubic feet, I could adjust my intermediate aggregate if I wanted to, and I could adjust my fine aggregate. So I may look at the aggregate costs, okay, and make a decision based on that, but I'm gonna start increasing my fine aggregate. So first I'm gonna go up to 1300, okay. How did I pick 1300? I just went up, and I go in about 100 pound um, increments. And I can see I'm getting closer. 26.53. Let's keep going. Let's try 1350. And you can goal seek if you want to. Okay. It's getting much higher. And let's try 1400. Okay. So right around 1375 should be right on 26.99. And notice, look at this. As I've increased my sand, as this went up, this went down, right? As this went up, this went down. And now I'm inside the tarantula curve. And if I wanted to, I could use this mixture, but I'm a little nervous because this point is actually very close to the boundary. I don't want to be close to the boundary. I want to be a good distance away from the boundary. So. I think about what else I could change. Do I want to add more sand? I could. Do I want to add more intermediate? I could. And then I could take away coarse aggregate. I'm going to add more intermediate because this is nowhere near the boundary. Okay. So let's try 450 pounds here. And let's take right away 100 pounds here. Okay, that's pretty good. I may even want to go a little bit further, but that's that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Again, that looks like a very satisfactory mix. 1,350 pounds, of course, number one. 450 pounds, of course, number two. 1,375 of my fine aggregate. 451 pounds of cement. 113 pounds of fly ash, 254 pounds of water, 2% air content. Everything's within the within the the curves. Nothing's at a boundary. All my checks down here are good. I'm done. Take care. Thanks.